Hey, how's it going everyone and welcome to my video on the 750Ti which is right here, the MSI OC edition and um, it's pretty big but should fit into this computer, it's not too big so yeah, that's what I want to show you and once I plug this thing in, I'll do some bench benchmarks and some games and show you how this uh, 50, 750Ti performs Actually, before I head into the gaming benchmarks, let me first um, go over the specs of this card. Now for the video output, we get a HDMI port, um, a VGA port, and a DVI port. Now that's kind of unfortunate because we do not have a display port on this model, which is um, kind of sucks because we, as, as despite touting as a G-Sync ready card, it won't actually work with G-Sync because there's no display port, which is the only um, output that's compatible with G-Sync. So, pretty unfortunate there. Keep note of that if you're buying this card. Um, here are the specs here. We got an interface of PCI Express x 16 3.0. Uh, 2 gigabytes of GDR5 RAM. And um, over a 128-bit bus. Which, um, not too much memory. But still decent enough. Uh, core clock speed of 1059 or boost clock speed of 1137. Memory clock speed of 5400 megahertz. Um, max resolution of um, 2560 by 1600. And DirectX 11 um, point 0.2 um, is supported. And I believe this car you can run off a 300 watt power supply. Although I would recommend at least 400 watts or even more of that if you plan to do um, um, upgrades in the future. Not sure. Um, you can probably get away with the 100 watt card, but I wouldn't recommend it. Anyhow, that goes over the specs, and without further ado, let me get into the benchmarks. So, first game we have to test here is Batman Arkham Origins. Kind of old title, came out in 2013, but still a pretty good looking game. I have everything uh, maxed out, or at least as much as possible that will let me. Not sure if there's any higher settings, but anyway, here's a benchmark. And we're getting pretty darn good frame rates here. We're getting well above in the 100 FPS range in the maximum, um, slightly above in the average, and a little below the 100 in the uh, minimum. Though still way above the 60 FPS range most gamers would want. And as you see here, the game looks quite nice. And um, here, finally, we get the results soon, and we're gonna get. 44 as a minimum, 140 as the maximum, and 102 as the average. So pretty darn good in Batman Arkham Origins. Next up is Alien vs Predator DirectX 11 benchmark, which you can download for free online. Um, running off the default video settings for the benchmark, and we're getting pretty good results here. Um, using FRAP root benchmark, um, and got 50 FPS as a minimum, 127 as a maximum. And uh, 83 is the average, so pretty good results on um, this benchmark. And just for fun, I'm gonna throw in CSGO to test what the 70 Ti and results are not surprising at all, of course. Uh, I got uh, 92 FPS minimum, uh, maximum of 139, and average of 114. So, um, of course, this game I mean, this card uh, blows through this game easily. Uh, max settings with four times MSA uh, anti aliasing. Um, I don't have it at 8 times because I forgot to turn it up, but it doesn't really matter. It still would have got the 60 FPS that you would want, so very good performance on this game. Next is Battlefield 4, a uh, very good looking title. Came out in 2013, so not long before the 750i in 2014. So how was the card stack up? Um, pretty good. Uh, I got minimum of 52 FPS, maximum of 96 FPS, and an average of 70 FPS on the high preset settings in the game. So very good results there and I de did test briefly on the ultra settings and um, still come up with uh, decent scores. I got a maximum of uh, 53 FPS, an average of 43 FPS and a minimum of 32 FPS. So very satisfying results out of Battlefield 4. Okay so here we have the 750Ti running Doom, um, very recent current gen title. I'm running at medium preset um, settings except for uh, motion blur and depth of field which are turned off but I did add uh, lens flare, lens dirt, HDR bloom and anti-aliasing TSSAA uh, ATX which is not too taxing on the performance and 
uh, at 900p uh, resolution, which is my max resolution on my monitor. And uh, generally you're looking at the 50, 60 F -F um, FPS range, though you do get dips to the 40 that you saw in the scene before. It's mostly in the indoor areas, which um, for some reason do dip below that. And um, here you get um, more smooth FPS except for like right here where there's a lot of action going on, a lot of enemies. Uh, you see an improvement right here where there's less enemies, lot less go effects going on. It's running much smoother. Very um, good performance here. Um, outdoors you do get even better performance. You get uh, much more to the 50, 60 FPS range, um, even to the 70s like right there. Um, with very occasional dips to the 40s. Only when there's like a lot, um, a bunch of action going on we dip to the 40s. But yeah, very uh, satisfying performance out of Doom. And last but not least, the final game I'm testing is Unreal Tournament 4, the pre-alpha. Now it's a strange choice, you may think, for me to choose a pre-alpha for a benchmark. But it is running the Unreal 4 engine, which uh, is a pretty good um, engine and I believe will be used more often later down the line for other titles. Now maps like this, not a lot of detail, so it's running more consistent FPS of 60. Um, but a map such as this, with a lot more detail going on, it's um, average out to a minimum of 43 FPS, a maximum of 61, and an average of 53. So still very good performance on the Unreal 4 engine, which um, is very impressive for uh, this card. It only costs $100 or less. So it came out in 2014. So very, very impressive, this card. Alright, final verdict. Should you get a 750 Ti in 2016? Now I would say maybe, and I'm saying maybe because while you can get um, a Sotec 750 Ti for a reasonable price of 107, or second-hand copies like this one here, you can get for 85. You can opt to spend a little more and get a GTX 950. That's only 145 dollars, or a new Ager here 142. Um, it will get a better performing card overall, and that comes with SLI support. Which is our biggest downfall of 70 Ti does not support SLI. But the uh, biggest factor in choosing a 70 Ti is that in the fact you can just run it from the PCI slot does not require a um, power connector, which the Zotac does not require a power connector. Now some models, like the 4 Win Edition, do require a power connector, but models like this do not require it, and you get great performance out of um, the card despite just running off the PCI slot. So, um, while this is a better future-proofing card, I would recommend the 750 Ti to people who don't want to spend um, money on their computer components, like, you know, get a new power supply and stuff, and just want a quick, easy um, upgrade, and just spend on the graphics. A 750 Ti would be a great choice to um, upgrade your computer with. However, for future games, like two, the, two or three years down the line, I would recommend instead the 950 or something even better than this. So it all depends on um, what you want. Do you want a quick, easy upgrade for your computer that's uh, reasonably priced, or you spend a little more and get a more future-proof card like this GTX 950? It all comes down to what your preference is. So that is my review of the 750 Ti. Hope you guys enjoyed my video and hope that it helped you. Um, come to a deciding factor whether you should get a 750 Ti and hope you uh, subscribe and check out my channel. Thank you guys for watching. See ya.